Welcome. You're listening to the I'm Wired to Inspire podcast, creatively engineered by Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist. I'm Wired to Inspire is a powerfully packed five minute podcast filled with inspiration and encouragement to get you through your day. It's designed to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. Now stay tuned for your host, Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist on today's episode of I'm Wired to Inspire. Hey everyone, and thank you so much for joining me today on my podcast. It is day four of the King Me series, five simple yet essential tips for the Christian single king. You know, this series is about the characteristics of a king, and I'm so excited because for the first time, I have a new special guest every day for the first four days, and tomorrow, our last day, it's a recap of the week. And each day, it's a man of God that joins us at the end of my segment, and that segment is called Kings with Character, and each of them has given their own personal take and special characteristic of a king that was highlighted for their particular day. Um, another thing too, I want you guys to make sure you hit the link below this podcast and download the free ebook that comes along with this series. I also have some relevant quotes from some great men of God that also, um, are relevant to what we've been discussing on here. Now, each of my series also has hashtags. So we have to take care of the housekeeping. These are the following hashtags that you can use if you want to post, repost, share, or or give anybody the information on it. It's hashtag thrive, cultivate, reign, R-E-I-G-N, king me series, kings with character, and hashtag live your authentic purpose. So with that being said, I just want to remind you guys of our first three days, which will lead us into day, into today's topic. Day one, God first in all things. Day two, plan greatness, pray and work. And day three, cultivate character, leading with integrity. But today, guys, is day four. Day four is about positioning yourself and being prepared for your prepared place in God. He has something he wants you to do. He has something That he's trying to share with you to get you to the ordained place, to get you to the place of purpose. So with that being said, my guest today has always been a mentor to me since I first come into the knowledge of who he was, I believe maybe 10 years ago. He has always been somebody that I kept in my back pocket, so to speak. Um, I chose today to use him because... I was already preparing for a new segment I will be sharing. I talk a lot about my mentors, and I call them my mentors from afar. And on Thursdays, right after Wednesdays, which is the blogcast, where I post a blog and a podcast, I will be doing Mentor from Afar Wednesdays. And with that, I will be including little tidbits, little special things that I've learned from the mentors from afar who don't even know I exist But I just feel led to pay them homage because this has been on my heart for quite a while, for ever since I started the podcast. I just didn't know how I was going to implement it. So I was already having my mind initially on the mentorship aspect of things. And that was already planned when God had given this to me to do this week. So this was the perfect um, person to use because a part of his ministry has to do with uh, mentoring and business in a very similar walk to myself again another mentor from afar so with that being said i want to just reiterate to you that i want you to get the ebook because today i really just feel led to just jump right in with him so in order for you to get the full lesson of today in context i want you to make sure you do get the information so you can read it because today what he's saying is so powerful i really don't have to say anything he's going to speak for himself so again This is day four, position yourself a prepared place. And although this king for today is now deceased, he was recently, he recently passed away within the last couple of years and he and his wife passed away in a, in a plane accident. And he is still just as powerful as he was then. He is genuinely a man that practiced what he preached, practiced what he has preached. And even now his legacy lives on. And when God opened a new door for me to say, hey, Robin, I want you to use Dr. Miles Monroe. I wanted to be obedient to that. So without further ado, please 
have your hearts prepared and ready to listen to the man of God. May he rest in peace, Dr. Miles Monroe. Therefore, there's no substitute for purpose. What I'm saying is so important. This is more important than anything that you can hear right now. (laughs) Because there's so many people who are lost, frustrated, and saved. There is no substitute for purpose. I was thinking of an example, and there's so many of them. Have you ever seen a manufacturer who began to build something... And because it didn't become what he intended, he made it something else? You don't see that. You don't. Check it. They don't stop until they get what they purposed. (coughs) There's no substitute for purpose. You cannot make a car a boat. You can't decide, I'm tired driving this car, I'm going to drive it into the water now, make it a boat. You just can't do that. (laughs) You can't substitute the purpose for the product. You cannot make a microphone a cooking spoon. I mean, you could, but it'll be microphone abuse. (laughs) You may laugh, but It's true about your life. If you are becoming something, or can I say, trying to become something that you are not, you are abusing who you are. There's no substitute for purpose. There is no satisfaction beside purpose. Purpose and only purpose will satisfy. Purpose, therefore, will haunt you. That's why God uses the word prevail. He says no matter what you plan, whether it's big, good, fantastic, evil, bad, or excellent, if it's not my purpose for your life, God says, my purpose will prevail over that plan. That word prevail means it will haunt you. If you did everything everybody wanted you to do, but not what you were born to do, then what you were born to do will haunt what you did. You got to understand God's word here. He says, my purpose will override, overrule all of your plans. No matter how good they are, no matter how big they are, purpose will frustrate your success. You know people, maybe you are one of them. I mean, you know everyone thinks you're doing well. But when you close the door at night and cut the light off, it's hell in the bed. You cry. You weep. You're mad because you don't feel fulfilled. And then when you go on stage, everybody claps. But in secret, you are depressed. They think you are the best corporate executive in the whole company. But deep inside, you really want to go preach. (laughs) Deep inside, you really want to go paint pictures. Deep inside, you want to do photography. You don't want to sit at no desk. Whatever your gift is, whatever your purpose is, it will make you frustrated. It will prevail over all of your success. Why? Because purpose itself will overrule your accomplishments. Purpose will overshadow all your work. Purpose will depress your impressions. You impress people, but you're depressed. Because deep inside, you're not doing what you were born to do. God says, this purpose will make you sick. My purpose will haunt you. It will make you feel so frustrated that no matter how successful the world thinks you are, my deep 
healing purpose will make you sick. Come on now. Good. And some of you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You work 30 years, 40 years for a company, and all they give you is a watch. <laughs> and now that you're retired, you really want to get on with your purpose now. <laughs> Wasted all those years. Purpose will frustrate you. Nothing but nothing can take the place of purpose. Purpose is the key and the measure of success. You are only successful if you did what you were born to do. Everything else is failure. So you only measure your purpose, your success rather, by your assignment. If I told you to paint the wall over here and you paint that one, beautiful, perfect, Excellent. You still failed. That's why it's possible to be good but wrong. To do a good thing but not the right thing. Purpose is the right thing. It's not just a good thing. Purpose is that which you were sent here to perform. Purpose is the end for which you began. Let me say, and we're going to pick up here tomorrow, but purpose is destination. Make a note of that. Purpose is destination. And destination is is destiny. Purpose is your end that is set. And then God backs you up to begin it. Therefore, you began because there's something that's already finished that you were supposed to start. Therefore, your birth was caused because of your destiny. Your existence became necessary because of your destiny. So (laughs) you don't go to your destiny. Destiny is pulling you. That's why when you go off course, there's something constantly pulling you back. No matter where you go in life, there's something that keeps on pulling you. Because destiny screams at you every moment of your day. It quietly screams. It's the loudest silence you can ever hear. It's your destiny. You hear it even tonight. There's something, even while I'm talking. It's probably crying louder now because I'm talking about it. Yes. It's screaming. It's that thing that is already established by God. That you arrived to fulfill. And no matter where you go, what you do, it haunts you. It prevails. It overpowers. You try to drown it in busyness, but it's too strong. You try to bury it in your preoccupation, but it is your occupation. That's why (laughs) until you find your destiny, All you have is a job. Tomorrow we will learn that your destiny is not a job. Your destiny is your work. Your job is what you do until you find your destiny. Hallelujah. Bow your heads with me. Just remain steady.
Holy Spirit is here tonight and he hears your cry. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you said that not even a bird falls from the sky that you do not know about. Even the sparrow that was thrown in free by the salesman, you know about him. The one that is considered worth less. You know about it. How much more valuable are we than these sparrows? Oh God. We're tired of existing. We're tired of even going through the motions. Worship. Rituals. Help us to know that you gave to the body apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. That they may train the people for the work of their ministry. Not to keep church filled with people, but to help people discover and to release them to do their destiny. Father, there may be those among us tonight who came to this meeting because you drew them by your spirit. Because they are crying out for meaning, purpose in life. Father, let them hear your loving voice tonight. Come home. Come home to the Father. For the Father knows why he created you. Father, those here tonight who who came to you but did not come all the way to their destiny. Let this week, this entire week, be the week that was the pivot of their lives where they stopped wasting time and they started investing time in their lives. We pray right now, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would do what it was sent to earth to do. And that is to give us dreams and visions again. To let us see things that are in the unseen. To tap into that eternity that we know is crying on the inside. And help us to see it clearly. For no man knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of a man. Even so, no man knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. We need your Holy Spirit, Father. Not just to shout, to dance, to sing, and and to have thrills. We need the Holy Spirit to show us our vision again. And our dreams for our lives. For this purpose, he comes upon flesh. Thank you, Father. Now, Lord, speak to every heart. And let there be a yes to what you are saying, what you've been saying all these years. Let us say yes to it, Father. your heads bowed and think about your life look back at it and ask yourself the question what have I done in the last 10 years 15 20 what do I have to show the unborn children that are yet to come that I have left for them If you're here tonight and you don't 
have a relationship with the manufacturer, the one who created you, who gave you life for that purpose and destiny in his mind, then the first thing that you need to do is reestablish your relationship with him. That's why you come to God. I pray that whoever needed that word, that it penetrates and that you really begin to hear God today in the walls are torn down. And I pray that you begin to get the courage to seek the Lord for your purpose so that you can position yourself for the prepared place. If God is telling you to move, move. If God is telling you to stay, stay. But you have to be in position to do exactly what God is telling you to do. Everybody's not called to ministry. Everybody's not called to business. But you are called to something. And whatever that something is, God is going to get you there. So I pray that if there is anything else that you are lacking, if there's anything that you are needing, if there's anything that's making you feel like what he discussed is unattainable, I am speaking life into you. And as a king, as a king with character, as you begin to cultivate who God has called you to be in this position in your life, no matter what you do, as long as you know that you are operating in the way that God has wanted you to operate, as long as you are trying to take the scales off and you are trying to get to the place, as long as you are aware that I know I may not be happy, God, right now. I know I feel like my life is out of whack. I feel like I'm missing you. I just feel like I don't know what I'm doing with my life. As long as the blood is pumping in your veins, as long as your heart is beating, if you have any one of those thoughts and feelings, God can do something with it. And he can throw you right in the middle of your purpose. And you don't even see it coming. So I pray that if there's anything that I failed in asking the Lord on your behalf, that he does not fail in giving to you. And I pray that God will allow you and give you the wisdom to position yourself for the prepared place he has called you to. I'm wired to inspire, and I hope you are too. Thanks for listening to I'm Wired to Inspire podcast at I'mWiredToInspire.com. If you enjoyed the show, spread the word and be sure to hit the five star rating on iTunes. For more information on this podcast and inspirational products and services, log on to the inspiration specialist.life or I'm wired to inspire.com. And remember to live your authentic purpose. Thanks again and see you next time.